Hey, welcome back to another video on the channel. Today we're going to be looking at the GTX 750 Ti, arguably one of the best budget gaming cards we've ever seen. The GTX 750 Ti has always been that budget gaming card everyone praises, but 10 years later can it still hold up? I bought this box EVGA model for £40 on a site called GP Used. Three days later it arrived nicely packed in its original packaging. So far so good. A trip down to memory lane unboxing this GPU with all of its necessary pamphlets, some stickers, a Molex 6 pin connector and this giant poster which I won't be putting up. You could tell the previous owner looked after this card as everything was in order and the card looked barely used. I couldn't identify a single blemish or scratch upon examining the card. It was dust free, which was great as I didn't want any other people's dead skin cells infiltrating my living space. Anyways, let's install the card and see how it can perform 10 years later. To test the card I hooked it up to a test bench paired with a Ryzen 3 2200G and 16GB of 32MHz RAM, a decent pairing considering the age of this GPU. I shot the pins and waited for that lovely startup page. And nothing. My first thought was, RIP 750Ti, you won't be missed. But as the CPU had integrated graphics, I plugged the HDMI into the motherboard and checked to see if it only allowed for iGPU boot. And it did. Setting it to PCIe 1 slot and restart the PC, then plug in the HDMI back into the GPU, short of the pins, and success. Now with the GPU up and running, I downloaded the latest 750Ti drivers only to realise it was still supported to this day. The 750Ti is on the Maxwell architecture alongside the 900 series cards, so it only increases the longevity of this card. The fact that you can download the latest game ready drivers from Nvidia for a 10 year old card is mighty impressive. Downloading the drivers, and a few minutes later, it was running great with no hiccups. But to check it properly, I ran a heaven benchmark, and to say it impressed me was an understatement. With only 2GB of RAM, it ran surprisingly smoothly. Granted, it was on medium settings, but at 1080p, which is the most played resolution, it wasn't bad. With that out of the way, let's test some games to see how it really performs. First off, we'll start with CS2, which is set to the medium preset at 1080p. Averaging around 80 FPS in a new title is more than I expected to be honest. This exceeded my expectations. There were a few stutters here and there with 0.1% figures in the low single digits when getting into combat, but the overall experience was pretty good. In Fortnite, on performance mode at 1080p, we saw a smooth average of 110 FPS with it dipping in the low 70s in more crowded areas. The overall gameplay was quite smooth with infrequent lag spikes. I was quite pleased how the game ran considering the VRAM limit is usually maxed out. Performance mode is definitely the option to choose when gaming with this GPU to maximise FPS and minimise stutters. GTA 5 at 1080p saw an average FPS of 46 with surprisingly no stutters. The area was quite busy so this result did surprise me. However, a smooth 60 FPS experience wasn't possible unless you crank all the settings to low. A buttery smooth 40 FPS will do whilst looking the par. In Borderlands 3 at the medium preset, I wasn't expecting this game to even run. However, it did. The game was averaging bang on 60 FPS, however, I did have to scale back the resolution to 900p to achieve that. The game ran pretty smooth with a few stutters, but the overall experience was pretty good. Rocket League saw a playable average of 90 FPS, running quite well with no noticeable dips in frames. For this type of game, the 750Ti is perfect, as it barely uses any VRAM. I was quite impressed considering it was on the high preset as well. In Minecraft playing on Sodium at 1080p, I saw a pretty decent average of over 200 FPS. I'd say for this kind of game, the 750Ti is perfect. There were quite a lot of stutters when generating new chunks and flying around can load the average FPS by a lot. 0% lows were again in the low single digits, but aside from that, the gameplay is decent when in generated terrain. And at last, The Last of Us. So what have we learned? That the GTA X 750Ti can still play games 10 years later. However, for a little bit more you can find yourself a much more powerful GPU, such as the GTX 1060, RX 480 and 570 to name a few. If you want to go the AliExpress route, you can find 580s for around £50. In 2024, I wouldn't recommend this GPU since it's nearing the end of its life cycle, but if you can find one for around £30 or so, then why not have a go? For old office PCs, this could be a great pairing to throw a little bit more life and to not contribute to any more e-waste. Anyways, thanks a lot for watching this video, if you did find it interesting or informative, remember to leave a like and subscribe for more. See ya in the next one.